Number two then from the 2018 SQA Higher Maths Paper 1. Another three mark question here. Lots of three marks on the first page. Here we go. Inverse of a function. You're given this function here and you have to find the formula for its inverse. Well, there's umpteen ways of doing that. Well, it's not actually umpteen. There's about two algebraic ways, plus a very quick way just using your fingers. The marking scheme gives three methods, but two of them are really just the same. One's got a little bit of a contrivance in it. The first way, the way that you'd probably do it, would be to say this. Well, after all, what does this function do? You start with the number x. The function acts in that number and produces an answer y which means that if you've got the answer and you want to go back to the original one, you'll apply the inverse. Notice the inverse actually acts on y using that terminology specifically, x for the starting number, y for the answer. But you have to write the answer in terms of g of x. That's where the wee fiddly bit comes in. So the first bit is simply this. So g of x produces the answer. Right, y equals a fifth of x minus 4. And what you need to do is rearrange it to read x equals instead of y equals. So instead of having the starting number and working out the answer, I want to put the answer in and get the starting number. I'll write it backwards. A fifth of x minus 4 equals y. I've not actually done anything yet, so there's no marks yet. The first mark comes when you start to fiddle about a bit. So a fifth of x would equal y plus 4, but then there's not much after that to finish it off. The 5 goes across and multiplies, 5y plus 4. And that's where the first two marks are. The first mark should really have been for making this kind of statement, but it's not. It's when you start to rearrange it, and then when you finish rearranging it. Now notice the variables. This one's g of x, but that's got a y. The independent variable this time is a y. Strictly speaking, what that line should read as is the inverse function acting on y is 5 times y plus 4 because it's y that's being fed in. However, a variable is just a variable. You can express this with any variable you care, and it's wanting you to use x, so you just transfer it to this. So it'll be 5 times x plus 4. Quite often you don't bother showing that line, but that line, strictly speaking, should be there, because with y here as being the independent variable, then it's y that's been fed in. But then a variable is just a variable. It just stands for a number you're going to feed in. So you could rewrite it with x's if you like. So you don't need to show this line. Those would be the three parts you would show. Now, because of this fiddly little bit here, you'll see another technique, which is to say this. Instead of saying y equals a fifth of x minus 4, what if you were to write x equals a fifth of y minus 4, because after all, that's the same calculation. You're sort of misusing the letters here. But in this respect, they still stand for the same thing. Y is what's been put in, and X is the result. It's just that you want to rearrange it. So X is what's been put in. So this is just called interchanging the variables. Really just for a little contrivance to avoid this little business here. So rearranging that's the same as before. A fifth of Y minus 4 equals X. It's just exactly the same. A fifth of y is x plus 4, so y is 5 times x plus 4. But of course now it's ready-made because you've got x as the independent variable. So this should read inverse function acting on x. So I didn't have to do any changing about, although the changing about was done at the beginning. Exact same marks. Exact same marks in the same places. I suspect you probably wouldn't do that. You would probably just do this and then just ignore this line, perhaps. However, there's a more satisfactory way, which is to say this. These functions undo each other. So if you applied g, which you know, to its inverse, that should give you back this number that the inverse was holding. It undoes its hold on it. And then just follow this. What does g do? It does a fifth of whatever it is. So a fifth of the inverse, take away 4 equals x. So a fifth, you can see where it's heading. A fifth of the inverse will be x plus 4. So the inverse function will be 5 times x plus 4. 
And the marks are for making this statement here, this important one. The function acting on the inverse undoes it all and gives you back the original number. Then rearranging it to the final answer. Now one thing the marking scheme was that if you just wrote this answer down, with no working at all, you'd get all three marks, three out of three. Now that doesn't usually happen. So you can't bank on that, you can't guarantee that'll be the case. If you knew it was going to be the case, you could have answered that just with your fingers, just by thinking, what happens here? What does this function do? If you start with x, what's the first thing you do is you divide by five. That's a divide by five. Then you take away four. That's a take away four. I divide by five, I take away four. So how can you get back again, undo these? So you would add the four and then multiply by the five. Add the four, multiply by the five.